Hello YouTube, I'm here with another time-lapse video. This one is for a 60cm Supia doll and she's here for a natural face-off with a red lip. So when I start face-ups I usually always try to plot in where I'm going to put the eyeliner and try to get that as even as possible and then once I have that done I'll put in the eyelid lines because knowing where the eyeliner goes gives me an idea of where I can put my eyelid lines and then after I have the eyelid lines on I add the basic eyebrow shape and I just do this in a soft pastel just to give myself a general idea of where I'm going to actually paint the hairs The paint I use for doing the eyebrow hairs and the eyelashes is often a watercolour gouache and that's not really for any particular reason, that's just because that's the colour that I like to use most often for a soft brown. Uh, if I need to do a hot pink eyebrow or a blue eyebrow then I'm probably most likely going to end up using my acrylic paints because those are the paints that I have in those kind of colours. So it's not really about the type of paint, it's more a colour preference. So I do build up a little bit of colour and a little bit of shape but mostly this is for getting the hair details down because then after I've done this I will add the final layers of colour with pastel later. Now the brush I'm using for this is a simple liner brush. It's a size 0 out of 18. I don't actually know what that means, it's just what it says on the brush, so <laughs> that's what it is. I buy these brushes online, um, usually from Dick Blick Art Supplies, but they're not always in stock there, so I tend to just chase them around wherever I can, and I'll buy several at a time so that I'm not constantly buying brushes, and I have different uses for them as well. I don't use the same brush for everything. Now it might look strange that I'm doing the details now before I've done the rest of the face up but I like to get the eyelashes and the eyebrows done early on because I find if I'm going to make a mistake it's most likely going to be during this stage. So if I do that early on then if I make a mistake then I can wipe it and start again and it's not too big of a deal. So if I spend hours and hours doing all of this blushing and getting everything just right and then I add the eyebrow hairs and eyelashes on, if I make a mistake then, oh, that's just heartbreaking if I have to start over again. So I try to get all of that detail work done early on and then I can just relax and focus on trying to sort of bring out the natural elements of the sculpt and that sort of thing. Which is really all the blushing is for the most part, you know, outside of the makeup requests there's just pretty basic blushing to just bring out what is already been suggested in the sculpt. pastels that I use for the face blushing are a mix of different pastels. Primarily I use Rembrandt but I do use pastels from other brands because again it's very much about colour choice rather than brand loyalty.
Now, you might notice at the end of the video that she looks a little bit different. Uh, her lips are a little bit darker at the end of the video because not everything was recorded because it's kind of, you know, it's a bit tedious with the blushing because it goes on for a really long time and there are a lot of layers. So I did do some work off camera. I've just tried to sort of hit the highlights and just share the interesting bits with you. With the lips, I did decide to do them in pastel. Sometimes I paint them on, it depends on the kind of look that the customer is after. And the colours. <laughs> so I find that blushing in warm tones or natural tones tends to work out pretty easily with pastels, but if I need to do something that is either lighter colour than the resin, or if it's on a darker coloured resin, then I'll use acrylic paints and get a nice colored base down first and then start adding pastels on top of that. But with this I didn't need to do that so I just went straight in with the pastel. Here is where I'm doing the skin texturing, which I'm stippling on with that same liner brush that I used before when I was doing the eyelashes and the eyebrow hairs. Well, it's the same type of brush. It's a different brush that I'm using though. This brush, I've marked it so that I know which brush it is, and I only use this brush for the stippling because it will fray the end of your paintbrush. So you don't want to use this brush to paint your eyelashes with because you won't get a smooth clean line. Anyway, with the skin texturing, I vary up the consistency of the paint so that I can get a more irregular looking surface to the stippling, just because I feel that that reflects how real skin looks a lot more closely. I love adding the moles. That's my favorite part. I just, this is the bit where I feel like everything starts to come to life. You can start to see the personality peeking through at this point. And then here I'm just adding the highlights to the inner corners of the eyes and also to the cupid's bow. I'm just using a standard acrylic paint to add the teeth in and I'm using that same paintbrush that I used before because you need something small and tight to be able to get in there. It takes a couple of layers to get the teeth to that nice white look. The glossing at the end is one of my favourite parts. This is when the doll really comes to life for me. I'm just using a Tamiya gloss. And this stuff is pretty great. Um, you can get it on Amazon. I don't think it costs very much. It lasts forever because you're only using a small amount of it all the time. And it dries to a really beautiful high sheen. It's also water soluble when it's wet, which makes 
clean your paintbrush really, really easy, which I love about it. Now, it's not water soluble once it's dry. Once it's dry, that's it, it's on. You're going to need a solvent to remove it. But while the product's still wet, you can just swish it off in a little tub of water and it's fine. And the gloss I am adding after she has a layer of sealant on. So once everything's sort of finished and ready, then the final layers of sealant go on and then the gloss goes on. Because if you don't have enough sealant down, and you add the gloss, it's just going to start eating into that paint and swirling around and you're going to ruin a whole lot of work that you've just done. And then here I'm going to be adding the eyelashes in. This is just Elmer's glue and I'm going to do it the same way that you put fake eyelashes on. So if you've ever put a fake eyelashes in, then basically it goes the same. You want to put your glue down and then give it a minute to go tacky and then add your eyelashes in. Because if you don't wait for it to go tacky, the eyelash is going to go in and smoosh around and you're just going to get really upset. So wait for it to go tacky and then you just pop them into place and then just tap them into place with a toothpick or an X-Acto knife or whatever you have. And I also tend to go into the back and add an extra layer of glue just on the back so that the eyelashes are in there securely and so they don't get pushed out when you're putting the eyes into the doll. And that's it. I really enjoyed how she turned out. I think she looks great. I love the red lip. Um, I hope you enjoyed that guys. If you have any questions just leave them down below and I will try to incorporate those in my next video. Alright guys, thanks for watching. Bye!